Today we will explore the tectonic rift valley called Thingvetlir in the southwestern corner of Iceland. We are flying a drone along the very boundary of North American plate. Thingvetlir is one of the most remarkable geological sites in Iceland, and in fact, it has world-class status. This is because the consequences of diverging tectonic plate movement can be seen here. Iceland is one of very few places on Earth where this can be seen on dry land. Although signs of plate spreading can be seen quite widely across the country, Thingvetlir is a particularly convenient place to examine it because of the geological conditions there. But what are diverging tectonic plates? The Earth's crust is divided into a number of vast tectonic plates that extend over whole continents. The continent of North America is on one plate, and Europe and Asia are together on the enormous Eurasian tectonic plate. The tectonic plates meet at plate boundaries, which can be of three types. First, there are plate boundaries where two tectonic plates meet and push against each other along a collision zone called a convergent boundary. These sorts of plate boundaries are characterized by extremely big earthquakes that occur when tension between the plates is freed. Ranges of fold mountains, such as the Himalayas and the Andes, are often found along this type of boundary. The opposite type of plate boundary occurs where two tectonic plates move, apart from each other, on a spreading zone. New crust is formed at such plate boundaries because eruptions continually occur between the plates as they move apart. This type of plate boundary is usually only found in the Earth's oceans along what are called oceanic ridges. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean lies the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and Iceland sits on its northern part. So, the divergent plate boundary between the North American plate and the Eurasian plate crosses Iceland, and the plates are moving apart by about two centimeters a year. The third type of plate boundary is called a transform boundary, where the tectonic plates slide past each other. This process occurs in the South Iceland seismic zone. As most people will probably appreciate, the movement of the tectonic plates in Iceland is such a slow process that it is impossible to just watch it happening in real time. It requires special circumstances to discern it in the environment. The reason why plate separation can be seen so well at Thingvetlir is that shortly after the end of regional glaciation, around 10,000 years ago, there were some big eruptions in the Thingvetlir area. Previously, eruptions had occurred under the Ice Age glacier and formed the Moberg hyaloclastite ridges and mountains that are found in the area. But after the land became ice-free, enormous shield volcanoes formed. Skyld Brida is the most prominent of them, but the lava fields that are spread across the Thingvetlir National Park probably formed in several eruptions from various volcanoes, such as the Eldborgir lava, which lies between Hrafnabjörg and Kalftindor, northeast of Lake Thingvatlavatn. The volume of lava erupted from these lava shields was enormous, which is convenient because it filled in all the unevenness and gaps that existed in the area. At the end of these eruptions, the lava expanse where the Thingvetlir Valley is now looked fairly even. However, because the area lies on an active divergent plate boundary, its appearance has changed over the few thousand years since the volcanic activity. In this interval, the eastern edge of the Thingvetlir area has become distanced from the western edge because of plate tectonics. Plate movement in the Thingvetlir area is thought to be only about 3-4 millimeters a year, which means that in 10,000 years the edges of the area have moved apart by about 30-40 meters. When the plate margins move apart in this manner, the area between them subsides and a graben forms. The volcanic eruptions, which happened on the north side of the Thingvetlir graben after the end of glaciation, restarted the clock in that area. We know the age of the eruptions and know roughly how the area looked after the eruptions, so now we can see many thousand years of geological history right in front of us. Some misunderstanding has occasionally arisen about the plate boundary at Thingvetlir. Most people assume that at Thingvetlir, the divergent boundary between the North American plate and the Eurasian plate can be seen. 
but this is not actually so. The plate boundaries in southern Iceland are a little more complicated, because the boundary between the two large tectonic plates is in two parts. On the one hand, a plate boundary lies along the west volcanic zone, from Hengitul volcano, north through Thingvetle, up to Langjökull glacier, and then straight across the glacier of Hofsjökull to the east volcanic zone. On the other hand, there is a plate boundary through the South Iceland seismic zone, the transform fracture zone where most of the largest South Iceland earthquakes occur, and the plate boundary goes from there over to the east volcanic zone at Torvajökull glacier, and then northwards across the country. In between sits a small bit of Iceland defined by the South Iceland seismic zone in the south, the west volcanic zone in the west, Hofsjökull volcanic system in the north, and the east volcanic zone to the east. This bit of Iceland belongs to neither the North American plate nor the Eurasian plate. Instead, it is regarded as an independent tectonic plate, a sort of microplate. It is called the Hreppa plate, and it moves independently relative to the two large plates on either side of it. So at Thingvetla, it is possible to see the plate boundary between the North American plate and the Hreppa plate. Another thing connected to the plate boundaries at Thingvetlia sometimes causes misunderstanding too. Where exactly does the plate boundary lie? The plate boundary is in fact not a narrow line. Rather, it is a wide area. At Almanagia, on the west side of Lake Thingvatlavatn, it is possible to see a sort of edge for the North American plate. A corresponding edge for the Hrepa plate is on the other side of the lake where Hrapnagia is the main fissure. Between these two fissures is a five kilometer wide area, which it is not possible to say belongs to one plate or the other. But the picture is not even that simple, because if the land is viewed in a wider context, two large faults can be seen either side of the Thingvetlia area. It has been suggested that the faults on the eastern slopes of Mount Botansula and the western side of Mount Laugavartensfjatl form the outer edges of the Thingvetlir Graben, and this illustrates even better that the plate boundaries are certainly not defined lines, they are wide areas. Thingvetlir is not only important to the history of the Icelandic nation, but also to the geological history of Iceland. Signs of tectonic plate movement are rarely seen as well as they are at Thingvetlir, chiefly because magma has not moved under the area or flowed across it for a long time, so tectonic plate movement has produced a large graben. The Thingvetlir graben is therefore not typical for a divergent plate boundary. Actually, it is an unusual feature. One of the best places to view the plate boundary is from the edge of the fissures on either side of Lake Thingvatlavatn. From the brink of Almanagia, the Graben can be seen well, with a close net of northeast-southwest trending fractures on either side of the Graben. One should also pay Mount Armand's Fettel particular attention. By looking carefully, it is possible to make out a large fault straight through the mountain, like an extension of Almanagia forming a sort of shoulder on the eastern side of the mountain. To get an even better overall idea of the region, it is good to climb either Mount Arnafetl, east of the lake, or Armansfetl itself, and see the area from a greater height. Enjoy the remaining part of the footage. Peace and blessings from Iceland, as always. God bless and have a great week.